Now, the latest unemployment stats show a slight improvement in the jobless rate, but concerns about employment in the country continue. The Institute of Race Relations says the stats show that race-based policies like BE have failed and are actually doing more harm than good. It says the policies only benefit a handful of politically connected business people, while the majority of South Africans remain trapped with little or no economic growth. Well, let's get the Institute's uh, Makone Maja now, just to expand a little bit more on this. Makone, good afternoon. Welcome to, day, to today. Why are you blaming BE for unemployment? Well, thank you for having us, Sinta Demoyane. I think one good effective way of measuring the government, the current government economic reforms against government performance, namely employment, is to consider BEE and its effect or its ability to achieve its stated purpose of ameliorating millions of black people from poverty, primarily through job creation. And what we're able to see is and, well, and observe over the years is that although unemployment figures have improved over the last quarter. If you look at unemployment trends over the last 10 years, which we provide in our press release, um, what you're able to see is that unemployment has only gotten worse. And if you compare it along racial, diff the ra different racial groups, you'll see that it's only gotten worse specifically for black people. And the reason we blame um, that on BEE is because BEE's stated purpose is to um, promote economic inclusion of black people. But what you're able to see through the unemployment numbers is that not only has that not happened, but that things have only gotten worse for black people. So the problem is not with BEE, therefore. It's with how it's been implemented or manipulated. Well, I think... The effective way to judge policy is not just by its purpose, but by how it's applied on the ground. And what we're seeing is that if things are getting worse, specifically in the employment creation, which is an area BEE aims to target, and if things are getting worse instead of better for the people for whom it's targeting, that is telling us that BEE actually does not work. So we judge, we judge policies, specifically BEE, not by its intentions, but by the effect and the outcomes on the ground. So currently it's not looking good, and therefore, as you say, uh, as you argue, it's now contributing to a worsening of um, unemployment levels, particularly or especially among black people. What should change in your view, Makone? Well, in the IRR, we provide for an economic growth strategy that wants to pursue economic growth not just for black people, but for all people of racial groups. And we provide for the um, employment, the economic empowerment um, development, which is the EED. And through that, we propose that large scale economic growth that is not predicated on using race as a or racial preferential procurement as a proxy is what is much is needed to um, in to drive economic growth, large scale economic growth in the country. So through the IRR's economic growth strategy, you're able to see how growth that is not predicated on racial or racially based or racially charged policy will enable large scale growth. And you'll see this supported too in the recently published paper by Growth Lab, where two Harvard researchers, economic researchers, show how proposed economic reforms by the government will not be able to circumvent or survive the effects of BEE, and that, if anything, BEE in and of itself has undermined its stated purpose of economic inclusion. So what, a, yeah, so what, 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 you, what you have as the IRR, what you are proposing, uh, is it to replace a BEE-type policy? And if so, how does it actually redress the imbalances of the past? Because the black majority continues to bear the brunt of uh, inequality in our country today as the most unequal society in the world. Well, absolutely. I think if you um, do, if we can assess that BEE has not worked, and especially has made things worse for black people. For example, if you look at un unemployment figures 10 years ago, say 2013 quarter three um, versus 2023 of quarter three, you see that unemployment has increased by about seven to eight percentage points for black people. Um, doing away with BEE 
and replacing it with the IRR's economic empowerment um, development policy, we'll see businesses coming in and investing in South Africa by, by, inf by enforcing things like property rights, by doing away with racial procurement. Um, that is how you enable economic growth, because not only will you fortify infrastructure, but fortification of infrastructure will invite and attract business investment, increase business confidence, and lead to large-scale so job you don't creation. Think, you don't which, think preferential procurement works? No, I think you, you look everywhere around you. Look at infrastructure. Infrastructure is breaking up everywhere all the time, not only in Transnet, but also at ESCOM. And so what we're seeing is that um, racial, racially charged procurement policies are being used as a vehicle for corruption. And that's how we know that racial procurement does not work. Yeah, but so there's nothing wrong. There, there, is nothing wrong. there is nothing wrong with trying to do preferential procurement, but the implementation or it's been captured or hijacked for nefarious uh, purposes. If it is being hijacked for nefarious purposes, does that is that not an indication that using race as a motivation for no, attracting I, or, or securing yeah. government? No, what I'm trying to get to understand is how then do you make sure that small black-owned businesses, women-owned businesses will be able to thrive in an economy that's currently so unequal because the intention of preferential procurement or BE was to address just that. But from what we're seeing, what we've experienced, it's been manipulated, it's been captured for the wrong reasons. So as I'm trying to get to, there's nothing wrong intrinsically with preferential procurement, or in your view, is there? Well, I think if you preferential procurement, if you judge preferential procurement on the basis that it helps to attract women businesses or businesses of people who are previously disadvantaged, you'll observe that that has not been the case. It has been very successful okay. at enabling and fattening the pockets of people who are politically connected. Women-owned businesses will thrive with or without BEE because they are competent, because they're able to deliver, not because mm. they are women-owned businesses. So we want a merit-based system that will attract businesses of all types, regardless of sex or gender or, or race. Um, but we want to, to see merit being used as a criteria for how government um, contracts its tenders. Yeah, so if that is a picture you're seeing, and that's our reality, how do we go forward? I mean, government seemingly is adamant that B is here to stay. Well, I think as the RO, we will continue to pound the pavements against any policies that um, tout race as a key criterion, um, an insignificant criterion for doing business with the government. But I think what we will continue to see is that as government continues to face the harsh realities of its ineffectual policies, including BEE, um, hopefully the private sector will step in and um, not only help ameliorate some of the suffering that we are enduring as South Africans, but also set the tone or the terms of engagement for business to say doing away with race-based policies is the best way forward and advance that as a way of engaging with government further. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you would welcome or promote uh, frank conversations with, with stakeholders like yourselves and, and, and other social partners, including business. Absolutely. Um, I refer again to the IRR's uh, economic growth strategy, which does not sideline the government, provides that government does have a role in enabling jobs and promoting economic growth, but certainly that the private sector has been far better at doing both those things and that um, an accountability sort of relationship between the public and the private sector moving forward is what will enable economic growth and, again, bring large numbers of jobs back into the economy. Thank you for your time and insights this afternoon. That's Marco Nemaja from the Institute of Race Relations. They are arguing that uh, it's time perhaps to ditch the BE policy like BE because they have not produced what they were intended for. In fact, they've benefited a few politically connected individuals and that maybe it's time to say goodbye to race-based policies in our country in order to have a dent properly on challenges like unemployment.